Hi, my name is Jalen Restell. Chloe Lomax Blackwell. Graham Morgan. Shakira. Jake Warner. Dane. Sophia Delgadio. Graceland. Ms. Bizardo. Miss Ardito. Miss Nelson. I took inspiration from that and kind of do waves in the water. It's pretty simple, but I like it a lot. I made a mask based on the show I did this year, or was supposed to do. We were going to do Little Women, and it was like my favorite cast ever. So I was like, hey, why not? Unfortunately, during COVID, one of my cats passed and we're like, let's get kittens. We go and we park outside the apartment building where they told us to go meet them. And they text my dad and they're like, hey, we need you to go across the street on the other side of Starbucks where you can't be seen by a security camera. And we're like, we did it. And then this guy comes out of the apartment building and then he just hands us a bag. And in the bag were the kittens. And this whole thing was really shady. And we never got an explanation on it. This is like, the black market for kittens. It was just a weird experience. I feel. I feel that it represents me. My whole soul, body, mind, and it still boggles me. I live in a world where good and evil exist. Thank you for bringing me into this making of theater that I've never seen yet. Thank you, lastly, for encouraging me to bring me out of the box I've been caged in. Until we meet again, and until I leave. Thank you. I think art is to make other people think, to make other people feel something, and that's what I try to do. That's how I know I've succeeded when somebody tells me that they, they felt what I I'm felt. I'm an artist whose mission is to move lives through theater. I believe that theater is a living art form which is constantly evolving. Theater is something that one person alone can influence. And this is my watercolor. That is me. My heart, it says my dog is so cute, gratefulness and happiness. I just wanted to draw something fun and goofy. So as you can see, here are the photos that I took. This is my picture. Here's my picture. I took it in my backyard behind my shed. There happened to be a praying mantis. This is the photo. Sorry if it doesn't develop well. I didn't really see much adjustment because the lighting was there. I did tinker with the saturation a bit, but I had it the way I wanted it to begin with. It is a one-of-a-kind virtual Thrive stands for teens having resilience in a virtual environment. It is a one-of-a-kind virtual camp for teens developed in a historic collaboration by Long Wharf Theater, the Schubert Theater, and West Park Country Playhouse. Responding to the requests of teens in our community, looking for artistic motivation and structure during the COVID-19 shutdown, interactive workshops and discussions were led by local artists, activists, and organizations. Teens from New Haven and Fairfield counties checked in online three times a day, three days a week. Workshops covered topics including spoken word, watercolors, wellness, music, monologue writing, and gave space for teens to talk about anything they needed to share during these crazy times. And for every check-in, they earned gift cards. The three of us were also hired through Youth at Work to support staff and campers and to create a record of this amazing program. 
After an inspiring three weeks of morning meditations and artistic exploration, what you're about to see is the work created by campers in response to everything they've learned during this program. Campers have opened their hearts and minds and stretched the limits of their creative abilities. And to top off this amazing experience, we are now joined by seven-time Tony Award nominee and winner for The King and I, Broadway actress Kelly O'Hara. <laughs> Thrive stands for teens having resilience. And oh, we're going to get, hi guys. Hi everyone. Oh, that was awesome. I, so everyone who's watching audience, this is my first time to see that video of all the kids doing what they're doing, thriving. CT teens thrive. It makes me feel like CT ladies can thrive. Can we have a group for the ladies? A CT moms thrive because um, in this moment right now, I feel like we worry that our kids, but not only our kids, but ourselves are not thriving because it doesn't feel normal to us. Um, and right then I saw this possibility watching that video. I don't know how you felt, but that's how I felt. Um, so anyway, welcome to Friday Night Thrive Live. I went off script a little bit there just because I was so moved. I think one of the reasons why these teens are thriving, at least in these moments when they got to be in these camps, in these days together is because they were, they were doing something for each other. They were making a connection. Um, I'm delighted to be here with all of you to celebrate them, these young artists. Um, tonight is a celebration of resilience and joy and hope for the future. Um, a future that feels really uncertain right now and um, especially in the performing arts world. Um, so let's just all take a collective, a collective breath so that we can all sort of thrive for at least these few moments that we're together and then carry it into the rest of our our days and weeks and months as they pass here just like this and we all find out new things about ourselves and these kids teach us more than we ever thought we could learn. Um, so we've got this, we're going to do it together, we're going to come out of this moment stronger, more creative and closer than ever. The showcase tonight is proof of all of this. As Alana, Bayou, and Sophia mentioned, this is a collaboration between three different theaters who are passionate, uh, passionate about the next generation of theater makers, artists, and healers. That's what I'm talking about. Um, it is a true inspiration to see what these students created with just simple materials, household items, and of course, their own artistry. We will get the added bonus of talking with them about their process and experience. You might even be inspired yourself to pick up a paintbrush, uh, write a song or a poem or a monologue or just get up and dance. Um, it is my pleasure, so let's get started, my pleasure to introduce our first wonderful artist. This is Sophia Delgadio. She's from Fairfield and she's 16. Hi. Hi, Sophia. I just, I, you're, you're famous. I just saw you in that video. <laughs> and I loved what you said about, uh, it really moved me. That's why I kind of started talking about the, that what art is about, what we do it for, to make people think, to make yeah. people feel. I really um, agree, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and how long, uh, how long have you, how long have you loved this? How long have you been bitten by this thing? Um, well, my stepmom is a director and she's been in my life since I was seven. So probably for about that long, I've been going to see her shows and she always made me go take art classes and I just kind of fell in love with it. And I started doing shows when I was in the sixth grade. And I just fell in love with the arts, I guess. Well, we do. And there's no going back, my friend. No going back. <laughs> um, so you're going to do a monologue, which I think is such a neat thing for people to get to see, to mm -hmm. just watch you go inside something. Um, do, you want us to do you want to tell us anything about it? Um, I did. It's a, it's a spoken word poem. And it's kind of about my experience as a young woman. And I think of young women everywhere about getting catcalled. Um, and I think since this is a, this whole camp was kind of a theme of resiliency, like how we as young women and women in general are resilient in that way. I love it already. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> I mean, let him play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, sweetheart. Can you give us a smile? You all dressed up just for me? They shout from the safety of their cars as they watch us all walk by. They sit and stare, wallowing in the security of manhood. We walk by in jeans and a t-shirt, a hoodie and sweats, a dress. Because we are women, it doesn't matter. 
but we know we can't give the satisfaction. And because we are women, we keep our heads high and we keep on walking. Hey, I think it took a long time for me to sort of come out with the idea that I was really tired and sick and tired of that. Yeah. Here, here you are putting words to it for all of us and congratulations and thank you. No, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. I just, um, to write about something like that, it, it's, uh, it must run deep with you a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like it, at school, walking down the street, it's, it's everywhere. So, you know, I think it's relatable for every female presenting person yeah. and men. I think it's relatable for everybody. Yeah, you're right. I think it doesn't, it's not just a woman thing, but it is sort of a, um, a shallow thing that, that doesn't make us feel, you know, that, that we can say, Hey, I can use this too. I'm more, I'm about this too. I'm about a lot yeah. of other things. I'm about a exactly. lot of other things. I'm not just a pretty face. Yeah. Know? Well, yeah. you know what? We can't necessarily change other people, but we can write like this. We can keep our head high. We can walk confidently and, uh, mm -hmm. and educate people. So thank you for being the beginning of that. Thank you. Yeah. You're awesome, Sophia. Good luck to you. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Me too. Man, I tell you, I, uh, I've thought about that a lot and the frustration and, but I've never sat down to write something about it that makes other people feel. So that's really wonderful. Uh, I want to introduce our next person, Chloe Lomax Blackwell from New Haven. She's 17. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm so glad to meet you. Same here. <laughs> Thank you. So it says here you're going to do an, oh, you wrote a song with original objects. What does that mean? So I just use um, household objects. Anything that was in front of me, I just picked it up and did it. <laughs> you know, that's amazing. I've been, I've been talking to students and stuff. They say, what do we do with these moments? And I said, you know, write about them, create, but then to use the objects that I think we're all probably staring at more than we usually do because we're sitting in our homes mm -hmm. and you made some art out of it. That's pretty magical. Um, yeah. Can we take a look and then we'll talk about it? Yeah. Yeah, let's watch. Hey, my name is Chloe Lomax Blackwell. Today I will be doing an instrumental song, which I call Funky Vibrations. I'll be using a cup holder, my makeup brush cup, my makeup brush, a pen, my plant holder, and a tennis racket. Let's get it popping. <laughs> Thank you. 
mesmerized by you <laughs> your your well your rhythm it's like your heartbeat you were sitting there and just kind of um just powerfully zen for me <laughs> <laughs> i mean so the rhythms and the you just do you do that a lot or did you just decide this is i'm just feeling creative today and i'm going to start doing this well my main art is theater and okay. so when doing this camp you know i was excited i was going to learn new techniques to maybe work on a monologue this summer, but I I found myself like staying behind the curtain. So I want to get out my comfort zone and I do do music sometimes, but theater is my thing. And I found myself being really bored as well this summer. So I was like, let me make a song is to lift my spirits up a bit. So I just, I just did it. <laughs> I mean, I love that. And obviously your rhythm, your sort of, your, your heartbeat, it's really important in theater. So when you're doing theater, I mean, that's going to, I can really tell, I mean, you're just, there's a lot of power control. There's a lot of like, but, but really like ease with like sort of rhythmic. I mean, theater is very rhythmic at times. It can be very, mm -hmm. you know, it's like that. It's like, doom, 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 doom. so I can see in you, not only will you be doing that, but you'll also just be doing it with stillness, which is so yeah. powerful. I think a lot of people... Like if you told me to do that, I'd be like, ah! <laughs> you know, <laughs> and like things would be falling off. But you know, you had the you had like a real sort of I got this, I got this, which I think makes us lean in, lean in, lean in. So that was mm -hmm. really powerful, and I love it, and so creative. Thank like when you, you were switching instruments, and I say instruments because you were using them extremely as instruments, gorgeous ones. You were like this next thing, you know. <laughs> I loved it. Thank you. Really creative. And uh, I mean, I hope to see you in the theater too, but bring out the, bring out some percussion when you, when you get a chance. Yes. Yeah. I will. <laughs> really wonderful, Chloe. It's, it's really nice to meet you. Same here. I think you've brought everybody some joy tonight. <laughs> I hope so. I hope I did. Yeah. That's what you're doing. Don't you worry. Good. Yeah. Thank you. It was so nice meeting you. <laughs> It was really nice meeting you and seeing your wonderful talent. Thank you. Thanks. That's really great. Um, people that kind of step outside their box with, uh, with art. I mean, obviously she could do a monologue for us. She could, you know, do a scene, a scene study or anything, but I don't know if I'd have the guts to do something that's so creative and so different. And then because of that, I'll never forget it. So thanks, Chloe. Awesome. Um, the next person we're going to meet today is Takira Bell. She's from New Haven uh, as well, and she's also 17. Hi. Hi, Takira. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Now, listen, I'm going to say we're going to meet your brother, I think, tonight, too. Mm -hmm. So when you guys were doing this camp, were you sort of like in separate areas or were you having your own thing? So we were really in the same area for most of the time mm -hmm. but whenever one of us wanted to talk we would just okay meet yourself so I can talk <laughs> okay okay good well that's fun so you can kind of do this together with somebody a little bit mm -hmm. yeah well that's nice I think sometimes it can be a lonely thing and that's why we reach out but when you have someone else who loves the art too that's that's really awesome yeah um, we really just leached on each other <laughs> good good leech I like that um <laughs> so you're going to do a monologue and what and watercolor this is so creative <laughs> All right, I want to see it, and then we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. What? My first time meditating, really meditating, was life-changing. The first few times I tried, I always found myself falling asleep or getting bored. Nothing really stuck with me. I had convinced myself that I just couldn't meditate. Despite this, I decided I'd give it one last attempt. 
There was a playlist on Spotify for meditation that I hadn't tried yet. It was guided, and I figured that like the others I'd tried, I'd get annoyed by the voice and fall asleep. I turned off the lights in my room, laid on my back, and started the podcast. The voice was actually soothing. The woman said to witness my thoughts while I laid there. Don't dwell or act on them, but let them pass by. Okay, fine. After a few minutes, I sighed. I'm not doing this right, I thought, and prepared to get up and turn the podcast off. You may be thinking about that rumbling in your stomach or wondering if you're doing this right. Those are your thoughts. Notice them. I stopped. I was doing it right? Shocking. I continued with the podcast, noticing my thoughts, letting them pass by as I was told, until I was told to stop. Then the woman started talking about bad thoughts. The ones that popped in your head, whether you were angry or upset. The ones that made you feel like you were a bad person. I have those sometimes. And when I did, I always blamed myself for them. I told myself that good people didn't have thoughts like that, and so I wasn't one. I thought that until the last line of the podcast. You are not your thoughts. After that, for seemingly, seemingly the first time ever, my mind was completely blank. No good thoughts, no bad thoughts, or song lyrics, just emptiness. You are not your thoughts. I repeated in my head until my head started to flood up again. That's when it clicked. I couldn't blame myself for thoughts I didn't control. I smiled to myself and saved the podcast for later use before continuing my day as the good person that I was. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. You're better than all of us, Takira. <laughs> you know, I meditate too. And this You're Not Your Thoughts thing it was very powerful to me. Um, but I didn't learn that until I was about 42 years old. So you're getting it now, which is so powerful. And that I, I hope whoever's watching is as moved as I am by the fact that the way you're thinking about things, I mean, you're setting yourself up for major success when, because we do this and then we, we give ourselves such turmoil because of it, but you're, you're letting go and having forgiveness. And, and so what, why did you start meditating? Um, I don't really know why I started meditating. I just felt like it was something that I wanted to try and that I want, I guess I needed to try. And so one of our workshops, we had, we were asked to make a list of things that we thought made us into the person that we were that day. And when I first meditated, I guess that was like a life changing moment for me. Like it changed my entire thought process from then on. So even now I like, just like I have a bad thought. I'm just like, yo, you, you meditated on this the other day. Like you're good. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it, they're tools, right? I mean, really when we think about it, we're giving ourselves tools to walk through this life and whatever's happening to us. We just need tools to do. Everybody does. It seems like everybody get, or other people are getting it perfect or figuring it out, but everybody has to have tools. And if you don't have the tools, then, you know, then you're not, you're not handle, you're not going to handle it at all. You're going to start fighting it. You're going to start judging, right? Whether it be outside or inside. So I think it's artists. I will always say that artists, they, they get it, you know, they're, or at least they're trying to get it. That's what I mean. They're trying to get, at least they're going towards tools and you're, you're getting an early start with that. And that's really, really exciting. And I'm just glad that you shared it with us because I think everybody out there right now should go try to meditate on this idea. Yeah. Uh, right now we, we need a lot of forgiveness and we need a lot of, mm -hmm. um, a lot of tools and, uh, you're going to be teaching people for a long time. I have a feeling. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, I think so. You've, ta you've taught me, you've reminded me, you've thank reminded you. me. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I hope I see you. I hope I see you in, we're not too far away. I hope I see you in, uh, in New Haven sometime. Of course. All right. Well, good luck to you.
You too. It was nice meeting you. You too, Takira. Thank you so much. Thank you. Man, these kids, these kids know more than, what is that? You know, uh, what a wonderful world. Uh, I see children, babies crying. They'll, I'll watch them grow. They'll learn much more than I'll ever know, right? They already are. And they're going through a lot right now, so they are learning tools. And camps like these obviously are bringing so much out in these kids. Oh, thank you, Schubert and Westport Playhouse and Longworth. Thank you. Our next kid, um, our next young adult, our next artist, I should say, is uh, Raya Morgan in Westport. She's 15. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? It's Raya, right? Not Raya. Yes, right. yes it's Raya. Raya. Mm -hmm. So nice to meet you. Nice meeting you too. How's your summer been? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for what I can make of it, it's been pretty good. Well, that's that's seeing the glass half full. I I know I know how you feel, um, but you're obviously you joined this 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 group and you've been able to maybe have some moments of creativity. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I think it's that's really healing and better. Yeah. Um, are you a theater lover? What do you love? Yes, I do theater. I'm an actress. So um, that's my primary art. Good. Good. Yeah. Um, which you're, you know, but, but so you're going to do, did you, you wrote this original spoken word poem? Yeah. So there's actually two. I don't know if they okay. included both, but okay. Yeah. Well, we'll see. let's see what it is and then we'll, we'll discuss it. Yes. Awesome. Hi. I'm going to be reading two pieces of poetry. Uh, the first one is called Angel Boy, a letter from your sister. He was so quiet, I barely heard him leave me. Goodbye, Angel Boy. You would have been 20 years old last March, but you'd never driven a car. Barely experienced the world, never to see the inside of a bar. 20 years old and never graduated, watched a rated R movie, never even dated. I'll never see your kids grow up to be good, just like you, or watch you change the world like I knew you had it in you to do. I will always mourn the experiences that you will never get. I'm mad about how the world cheated you and how you weren't even upset. You were everything good and right and kind. And I just don't think it will be enough to have only your memory left in my mind. And the next piece is called Fields of Imposters. Running from the light and still choosing to reject darkness, I find myself in a place of somber solitude. The air is thick with music made only for my ears. Bells are ringing my thoughts bringing me ever so slowly to a crawl. With each slither, my body leaves behind a trail of letters laid askew. My words melt into the ground until flowers grow that look like you. Thank you. <laughs> wow, I'm just gonna sit here for a second. Um, that you're, you're 15. Yeah. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you. I'm incredibly moved right now. Is, is the first story based on truth? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've lost your brother? Yeah. He was um, sick. He was sick. When he was 12. Sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt you. No. Say it again, please. I... Oh, uh, yeah. When he was 12, um, he was diagnosed with cancer. And then passed away, unfortunately. I'm really sorry. I'm oh, thank you. Rhea, you, uh, you will have this in you as an artist to, to create from. It's nothing that anybody ever wishes, but what you're doing with it. That, that was brilliant. And thank you so much. And beautiful. And, and actually a really lovely tribute to him and so you will use your voice for both of you yeah that's the plan thank you 
You're welcome. No, thank you. Um, your writing's extraordinary, both pieces. The next piece just so full of um, imagery that just takes us away and uh, makes us feel so much. And and as an actor, you will speak these, you know, these these things that you feel and write, and then you will speak the words of other people that write in ways in with depth of feeling that most people don't know. So yeah. um, I'm. I look forward to all that you do. Thank you. You're going to Thank do you. so much. <laughs> so, so uh, you do you go to Staples? Yes. Well, I'll, I just moved from Las Vegas, so I will be going to Staples. Yeah. Just moved from Las Vegas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's a big change. I moved when I was six. I moved when I was sixteen, and it was. The hardest time in my life, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me because yeah. I learned a lot and I, I think you will too. And you'll find your, are you, are you finding any friends even though virtually or at least? Um, yeah, I mean, kind of, I've met a few people, but now with, um, school being so different, I don't think we're going into school on the same days, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Keep writing. I will. Whatever you do, put it from here onto there. Okay? Thank You'll be you. powerful. You've got a lot to say. Thank you so much. It was so nice meeting you. You too. Thanks for sharing with us. Thank you. I feel like this is heavy tonight. And I think what I want to say for whoever's watching, parents and, and audience about these kids is they're going through so much. They're going through so much very confusing. We think we are, but the thing is, is that there's, there are things that we can put control on, uh, here and there to try to make us feel better, whether or not we really have control or, at all. But, um, you know, we can wear our masks and we can, um, put some pieces in place. But at that age, I can't imagine that there's much control at all or any feeling of, of certainty of anything. So, um, it's things like this that allow for catharsis, and, um, you know, allow for that feeling or those fears to be put into something that is worthwhile. Those two pieces that she just wrote are worthy of publication, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, that is how art is created. It is creative out of feeling. It doesn't always have to be sad. It can also be very, very happy, very, very funny. But that is why art is created in the first place. So we're basically watching it right now tonight. We're watching um, something being made out of this uncertainty and pain. Um, I applaud everyone. Uh, let's meet Harrison Solomon from Weston. He is 16. Hi, Hi, Har um, Hi Harrison. How are you? Uh, I'm doing good. good. Um, how are you, I guess? Well, thank you. I'm good. I'm okay. I mean, you know, I'm actually pretty, I don't know if you're watching, uh, but I'm, but you may, you may have seen all of these videos, but I'm, I'm feeling heavy and emotional and sort of inspired and about what you guys have been doing this summer, how you've been sort of, uh, channeling everything you're feeling through your art, which is, I know, I know for me, it's been, it's been like, it's like right now, it's like a lot of like pressure, you know, that feeling like my thing might not be that great, you know, and that kind of fear, uh, right now, but that's, yeah. that honesty is remarkable first of all because even my age I feel that all the time like my art is not going to compare to uh, my peers and so you're just being an artist Harrison you're just being yeah. a human being <laughs> can we see it can I see it it's uh, you're gonna you, I want to see your watercolor and then we'll discuss it okay, okay. they're gonna play it or they're gonna show it so this is my uh, watercolor painting that I made for Thrive. It's kind of goofy because I'm kind of goofy and it's kind of it's kind of fun. It's kind of random. Uh, it's like a Maury eel, a little wasp tail. Uh, it's, and he's just kind of thinking about some random stuff and some random doodles because I like to think, I like to have fun. I like to be kind of goofy. I love it. I love it. It's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. You like to be goofy? 
Yeah, I like I like being goofy, you know. And one thing that I really love is I really love drawing like just random doodles and random monsters because I feel like there's no real there's no real pressure to make them feel realistic, you know. And I think I just really like that's what I like doing, you know. Well, I love that because it's also kind of sort of a a channeling of getting away from the realism so that you can sort of go into alternate universes, alternate characters, mm-hmm. alternate there and there's no rule. You know, you made a moray eel, but you know, he was, he was thinking, he was, you put what he thought about, you know, he is yours. Uh, You Mm -hmm. could write an entire, you could draw an entire cartoon around it, a a whole story that has nothing to do with this world. You could actually help us escape sometimes. Isn't that what art is too? Yeah. So you make a whole story of it and then we go inside your story. Mm -hmm. You take us on a trip. Yeah. Like I... I've never understood why people like those like really dark worlds, you know, I think real life is dark enough. I liked, I want to escape to a place that's just full of like the most random, like the most random and cutesy and funny stuff. You know, I don't want, I don't want to live in a dark city. You know what? I think people are really grateful to you right now because I, I do feel like a lot of what we watch on television has gotten really darker and darker and darker. Mm -hmm. And it is this sort of like leap into deep realism, but it's not everybody's reality, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, But we are going through so much darkness that for me personally, I like the escape right now. Um, For my work, Mm -hmm. my husband says things to me like, go spread the joy. And I've had people say, thank you for, you know, taking, I mean, not always, not the performance, but, but the show I was in was more of a fun, uplifting show. And mm-hmm. I feel people need that, and that's what you're presenting. And so I think right now is the perfect, perfect time for it. So, mm-hmm. and it was actually perfectly placed in the show because you're right. I just said to you, there's been some heaviness, and then you give that perfect breath. So, what that is, my friend, that's called laying out the show very well. <laughs> that's a, a perfect thing. So, Harrison, you've given us a gift. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great to meet you. Great to meet you too. These kids are amazing. Um, Let's go to our next one. Can't wait. Oh, you know, actually, so there were a couple of kids who, because of, well, as we all know, most people watching it right now in this area lost all power. Some people for a day or two, some people for over a week. And I hope everybody's okay. But because of that, um, we're going to do a special segment right now um, to celebrate uh, let's see, one, two, three, four kids who can't be with us tonight but planned on it because of down internet and other things like that. So uh, RJ and the wonderful people have uh, made a compilation of their art. Uh, so here are Emma um, Hachopulu, Jose and Jaylene Resto, who are brother and sister, and Camille Foisy. These are their, their wonderful pieces of art. Hi, I'm Emma, and uh, for the workshop, I decided to use watercolor. I really dislike using watercolor. I'm used to using acrylic paint, that's my paint medium. But for this showcase, I decided to use watercolor because I want to push myself outside of my comfort zone when it comes to painting. So I decided to be inspired by a scene in a show called Avatar The Last Airbender. It's an early 2000s kids cartoon. And this is inspired by the scene where the character named Iroh sings the song Leaves from the Vine. He's mourning the death of his son. It's an anniversary and he's really upset. And that scene and that song has always moved me. And most of the show's style is done in watercolor when it comes to like visuals. So I wanted to finally try and recreate it with the motivation. Here's just a closer look. I'm really proud of the tree, (laughs) the tree specifically, but yeah, this is my final product for the showcase. So there it is one more time. Yeah, thank you.
We're back. Um, those were wonderful. Uh, I think that these kids, um, you know, as I was listening to Emma talk about her watercolor, um, she has something that she's very proud of and uh, a talent that she loves to do. And she stepped outside of that box to do something else and, and shows the positive things about it that she feels. And I think that is a huge thing for kids to be able to do, to, um, to kind of stand their ground and, and to find ways to be confident and to then tell us about it. You know, we think about sometimes people think about teenagers and they, because they're not saying a lot to us and, and, you know, in an outward way, um, that they're not thinking about so, so much. And I just loved her sense of confidence. And then, um, with Jose and Jaylene, their, their art and just the word, the words that they have to say, because right now when we feel like we're going to through these storms, literally and figuratively, of course, in the last several months, um, Maybe it's not just all chaos and turmoil, but maybe it's actually, and I feel this very much, um, we have to see it. In all the, the darkness of it, we have to see some opportunity in it, otherwise it's all in vain, right? So what's the silver lining of it all? Um, clearing a path. There is a path being cleared for some sort of betterment, for some sort of growth. So I think we'll all try to find out what that is, but that's, these kids are the ones telling us to look. They're the ones telling us to open our hearts or giving us a chance to escape a little or taking us deep inside it so that we can feel catharsis. Um, you know, like Rhea. Um, these kids are amazing. Um, but let's, let's see more of them. And um, this is Jay Wallace. He's from Danbury and he's 15. Hi. Hey, Jay. How are you? Good. Thank you. Pardon the t-shirt, please. Uh, I didn't think that through. No, your t-shirts, your t-shirts great. I'm, hey. I'm glad you're, you're, you're wearing, wearing whatever you want to wear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, we were just talking to, you know, uh, to the kids, you know, it's been this very, very cathartic night here with all of this art, this escapism, this realism, this pain, this heaviness. Um, what do you, but, but it sounds like you're going to give us something, something different, right? Some comedy. Um, yeah, I mean, you could call it that. I mean, some people <laughs> might not, but to those people, I say, "Huh, all right." <laughs> Meanwhile, the people that like me—that's right. You can't spend too much. You know, you just got to say to yeah. those people, "Huh, right?" Well, they exist. The, exactly, exactly, and that's all about all we have to say, right? We can just absolutely. Then, then let's turn. Let's turn it like you know, across the street, right? Yeah. Definitely. Um, can I see a little bit of it and then we'll talk about it? Sure. All right. Hit it, RJ. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Uh, I used to go to boarding school and um, something that was annoying about that is I would keep losing my clothes, which is kind of hard to do when it's all tucked away one eighth of the time. Uh, but... We had a laundry service that would come Thursday and wash our clothes until two, next Tuesday, which was annoying because it mean I'd have to choose, do I want to choose this white shirt with the grapes fruit stain or these, you know what, tell you what, I'll choose the mustard stain <laughs> with the torn pants. They're definitely out of dress code. Yeah, that, that's going to be good. That's going to be good. We did have a washing machine, but we would have to, you know, pay money for that. Uh, by which I mean, we'd have a card and, well, we'd have to sort of treat it like a transaction machine. So that officially meant that effectively our washers were, were ATMs, except <laughs> they just took <laughs> money. That's what it is. That, that, that's the thing. That's the thing now. Uh, but I bring up the clothes because being stuck at home in quarantine has made me realize I need clothes that fit me because pretty much I'm a growing person. So that pretty much means anything that I get today will not fit me tomorrow. Shoes, gone. This shirt, it's kind of choking me at the neck. These pants, see these? 
in five minutes it will cut off circulation and I will need to go to the ER, which I can't because the road is down by <laughs> down power. power, power. Yeah. Luckily, I've got places to store my clothes. Like, you know, downstairs in the IKEA shelf, which is incredibly hard to build. I don't know why. That's not what IKEA stands for. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a little drawer. I don't know why I said shelf, but here's the fun thing. If my parents hear this set, I can sleep in there tonight downstairs because I'll have to. Though it is kind of wobbly, so because I'm not sleeping tonight. Oh, wait, wait a second. Hey, Mom, you want to hear my comedy set? <laughs> All right, thank you, everybody. I'm Jay Wallace. You've been wonderful. Good night. <laughs> Why? Oh, when I was young. <laughs> what, like last week? When did you yeah. make that? Yeah. One week younger, one week not as wise, one week not as refined. That's, you know what, you were perfection. And in person, look at you, you're like improvisation king right now. Yeah, uh, I did do a lot of theater. Uh, it's sort of my, not necessarily my thing, that would imply sort of that it's sort of a niche. No, it's it's something I've really taken part of since maybe second, early, third grade. Um, and that sort of motivated me. I branched out to other states of performing, like music. Uh, it definitely, as you can see, I love improv. Yeah. Um, uh, some Sometimes I'd, I would like to do a short film, but that's definitely later down the road. But performing is very important to me, and, sort of, and doing this camp is definitely sort of, not even sort of, it, it definitely has helped with give, not only giving me something to do, but giving me some way to showcase myself, a platform that I could have to project myself, but also so I could see what others project, learning and also being learned from. So that was, that, that was definitely very enjoyable for me. I love it. I love it. Did you do some in your in the class of the camp, like when you guys were all together on there, did you do some comedy and have anybody give you comments or did other people do comedy or what happened? Actually, yes. Uh, we did have a whole comedy workshop day. That was fun. I mean, I got to make fun of my dad a little bit. He doesn't mind. He's used to it. Besides, he can just make me do work anyway. Because, <laughs> oh, actually, there's a bit I left out. Uh, my father, he's a very, he's, he's a man's man. He, he, I love him. He's a nice guy, but He's the kind of person who will watch you mow the lawn and just sit down in a lawn chair drinking lemonade. That's it. Yeah, but you know what? He made you, so he he has earned to sit there and you know watch you. You know, he's fair, your dad, right? No, fair, I mean that's what I tell my son. Get, does get a win once in a while. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you bring your. I'm sure you bring your household a lot of joy with your comedy. You're very your your personality is electric. You're very funny. Um, yeah. I loved also your, I don't know if you meant to, because you say you wanted to make a short film, but your scene was set up with the kind of the light coming. It was dark as if you were in a club and you were, you just got up to the stage for the, you know. Yeah, sort of like spotlights. Uh, totally. Yeah. It was really perfect. Advantages of not having power. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I hope you do know. I see that you have light there and obviously you're, you're on your computer. So thank you. You brought us joy. I appreciate it. It's so nice to meet you, Jay. Nice to meet you too. Thank you. Good luck. I'll come see you. Come see you do stand up very soon. Um, our next uh, artist is Jake Warner from North Haven, and he's 16. Let's meet Jake. Hello. Hey. Hi, Jake. How are you? I'm good. How are good. you? I, good. I think I saw you on the compilation video. Did you have yeah. a, 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 was it a painting? What was it? It was a picture like in my backyard. Oh, the I yes. Took a picture of some flowers. The lavender or whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah, I unintentionally put I unintentionally got a um I forgot what they were called. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I loved it. I love you were like I find it behind I found it behind my shed. Let me ask you something before we see your artist statement here. Um is that something that you would, is it because of the, where we are right now that you went out into your backyard and saw things that you've never noticed before? Is that why you took a picture of it? Yeah, it's like, I don't really like usually see the beauty in a lot of things. Mm. 
until uh, until I get inspired. Mm -hmm. I think I think we're a lot. Uh, most of us feel are that way. We forget to kind of stop, and they say smell the roses or even see the roses until we sort of need it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's human. That's human. It's human nature. Um, let's hear your statement, and then we'll talk about it, okay? All right. Okay. Hello, I am Jake Warner, and I will be reading my artist statement. I'm a 16-year-old boy from North Main, Connecticut, going into my sophomore year at Cooperative Arts and Humanities High School. I started writing when I was in my last year of elementary school. We were doing a short story activity for Halloween. I fell in love with my short story so much that I wanted to continue it and turn it into a long story. That's the thing about my work. I make it to show that you can make anything you want. You don't need to put or close yourself into a specific genre to call yourself a proper writer. You can write about completely different things if you want to. If you're passionate about it, nothing is stopping you. My book I'm currently working on, The Life of Isaac, is literally the polar opposite of what my first book was about, The Zombie Apocalypse. This book is from the point of view of a boy named Isaac and tells his life story through his sophomore year in high school, which isn't easy. What drives me to write this is that I feel it can be very relatable and speak to or for a lot of people. I think that people should care about my book because it can be a good eye opener. This story talks about a lot of topics, some that can be controversial, some that can be nice to see, some that can be hard to read, etc. I hope it will make an impact, maybe even a lasting one on the reader. What my art represents is passion, being able to do what you love with no care in the world and listening to no judgment. Not all of my work is about the same thing, but for this particular story, it communicates a lot about how life works for contemporary young adults and also about how much hatred and confusion there is in a growing person's world today. Life. It can throw you curveballs, challenges, but regardless of what happens, I believe that light outweighs the darkness, even if it looks impossible. What I consider unique or special about this story is that parts of all the main characters' personalities are a lot related to my own personality. My work means everything to me. Everything I make, I fall in love with and get so many ideas for. Writing is a big part of my life that I know I can never live without. Thank you. Um, so you've written, this is your second book? I, that's amazing. <laughs> Um, this is like and this is first sorry this is like the first book that I've like actually haven't scrapped because I've written a bunch of books before basically on the same topic and this is like the first time I've ever written a book that I'm like so invested in I'm actually changing it up like mm -hmm. this is the first time I've ever written a novel and I was I had I had original plans but once I got more into it, I was like, okay, I, I should add this. I should make this important. I should add more to this storyline. And it just became what it is now. You just felt, you just followed your, your heart with it. I mean, you said in your artist statement, we shouldn't be put in boxes. We should be able to write whatever we want to write, what we're moved to write, right? So that's what you're doing. I mean, yeah. the important thing, Jake, is that you're writing. And it sounds like you're really writing. You're writing deeply about a lot of things. Um, and at 16, I mean, that's hugely, your future is, it's amazing. And, and again, with all you're going through at your age and people are going through right now, and, and you said it in your statement, you're finding a way to create from it, which is really, really important. Yeah. Yeah. You should be proud of yourself. Okay. Yeah. Easier yeah. said than done. You know what? I'm proud yeah. of you. I'm proud of you, and I'd like to read your book. Okay? Thank you. Finish it, okay, so I can read it? I'll try to. I'm trying to get it done by the end of this year. All right. No rush. Make it what you want it to be. Okay? All right. Thank you. All right. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Jake. <laughs> oh. Be proud of yourself, Jake. Easier said than done. Leilani Rivera from Hampton, and she's 16. Let's meet her. Hi. Hi, Leilani. How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm, I'm good. That's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. You seem to be in a, a bright, shining place right now. Indeed I am. My lights are currently on, and there's still light coming through the window, if that's what you mean literally. 
Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? I don't have as much light for some reason, but uh, it looks like you're outside on a, on a bright day. If only it was that bright right now, considering it's cloudy. Yeah, I know. It's true. So um, are you a singer? Well, yes. I've been... I've always been interested in like musical theater. So like singing, dancing, all that types of stuff. I like being able to like project myself and show myself to the world and bring characters to life, you know? Oh my gosh. I know. Of course I know. I do know. And I love it. <laughs> um, do you want to share with us your original song? Abs absolutely. All right. Let's play it and then we'll talk about it. Yes, indeed. All right. All right. Swords are bloody, the world is waiting. Press on, keep up, don't stay behind. So many enemies will so little time. Just gotta take it one step at a time. With all this darkness surrounding, it feels like an endless endeavor. You are never alone. Together we are not shaken. So on God prepared to take action. Stretch a fleet and unafraid. No more hiding in corners. All as one. Make sure to leave no one. For we are not shaken. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you. It's full of so much artistry. I love the lyrics. I love your, your choreography with your beautiful hands and, and your emoting. And I just, um, it was wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, so you love musical theater. Are you going to, are you going to do, try to go into musical theater or do you think, or are you still waiting to see? Yes, indeed. I do plan on possibly going into musical theater if it's possible. I want to be able to take whatever opportunities I can and move forward in order to like move forward with my career, even during this time where we, we as artists might not have access to as many things as we used to, especially theater people like myself, since we can't really put on shows live considering we can't go anywhere. We're stuck at home, but we try to move forward and try to work on our craft, even though we're stuck here. I know, I know, and it, it seems daunting, but the, the thing about theater that I think is also good to realize is that it's a lifelong education. It's a constant evolve, evolution, and so it doesn't, as long as you have it in your heart right now and you're doing stuff like that with your, with your artistry at home, you're doing as much as you actually could be, it, believe me. Now, there's nothing like being in front of a live audience, but you'll be, you'll be catching up. You'll be doing it forever. So right now you're doing, you're doing exactly what you need to be doing and you're going to keep going. So I wish you all the luck in the world. Leilani. Thank you so much. You're welcome. My okay. musical theater and voice teacher actually was really excited that I told her that I was going to be here and that I was going to meet you. What's her name? Um, her name is Jenny. Okay. Oh, good. Well, please tell Jenny. Thank you. And thank you for you. Thank Jenny for you, and, and good luck to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. She's adorable. Um, Amelia Lockett from Hamden. She's 15. Hi, Hi Amelia. How are I'm, you? I'm good. Really nervous, though. I, please. Been there, been there, done that. So uh, join the crowd. But uh, we, we would love to see you. We're so glad you're here. I'm excited to be here. Good. You're going to give us a, an original po some original poems? Yeah. Um, I wrote them when I went out of state uh, during camp because I don't plan anything. Um, so it was mostly just me, like, well, one of them is me just wanting to share, like, what I saw because I love the way it looked and just the vibes of the country, you know? And then um, the other is about COVID because why not? Uh, write about it. If you can't do anything else, write about yeah. it, right? Yeah. All right. Let's hear them and then we'll talk. Yes. Yeah. 
Hello, my name is Amelia Lockett and I'm going to be doing some spoken word for the CT Teens Thrive Showcase. Hope you like it. Uh, this first piece is called New York. Sprawling green mountains, towering trees, a breath of fresh air, the light but cool breeze, dark gray clouds in lingering piles, a chill in the air, and no one for miles. A fog descends the higher we climb, enveloping us in a misty existence, truly, truly sublime. A silence like no other as the sun disappears, we all sit quietly as night grows near. Tonight we sleep in beds not our own, but for another week, this is our home. Thank you. And this next piece is called Sick. The disease that sneaks and seeps into your pores, hiding in the corners and crawling under doors. Wear your mask and stay f six feet apart. If you catch it, it could stop your heart. Protect your loved ones, protect your kin. We don't know if things will be normal again. Thank you. Amazing, really, really great. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, you know, sometimes I think about it and I don't know how kids your age are thinking about um, this disease, this disease and the fear. And I know you've been told by all the older people in your life, you know, be careful, be careful. But it sounds like you're you're really soaking it in and, and writing about it. And like I said right before, you as an artist are doing exactly the right thing, you know. Yeah. And your first poem was wonderful. The imagery is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I never like wrote poetry before, like that at least. And so like doing the camp and stuff, it really helped me like discover that like I can write stuff. And I started like coming up with things and there'd be rhymes and I'd just start writing. It would all just come out. And it was really, really interesting because I've never even tried it before. Well, as you know, there has to be a beginning to everything. And every writer probably was writing out of some sort of necessity and then realized it was cathartic. And also it gave other people something to enjoy, you know, so that's what you did. <laughs> You're really wonderful. Thank you so much, Amelia. Thank you. Keep writing. Thank you. Okay. Oh, these are such great kids. Um, our last artist today is Dane Bell uh, from New Haven, 17. This is uh, Takira's brother. So let's see what, uh, what he has to say. Hey. Hi. Well, you look a lot like Takira. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I'm still thinking about what she had to say, and I'm so glad to meet her brother who shares all of this with her. And so um, I want to I want to hear about you a little bit. You you've got a monologue and a watercolor both t for us. Yeah, um, it was something. It was kind of put the last minute, but I struggled thing together in the first. Place. It was like two, it's the last few hours and it was like okay um what am i what am i willing to you know show people and it was a very hard process for me and you know a few hours later my my you know this project came out and it was like okay yeah this is something that i'm i'm really glad that i can finally let out you know what i think what you just said is a very important thing to realize for anybody who's watching any artist is that art in, in general is not something that you can plan for that much. And sometimes you feel like you're hitting a wall and then something breaks open. And if it takes you two seconds to do it, it could be just as powerful as something that was, that somebody spent years on. So I'm glad that you did have some sort of opening. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's see what it is. Um, let's take a look and then we'll talk. Humans are so complicated, so much so that one's gotta wonder, could I really be an alien? I don't like feeling emotions, only because someone someday will make me try to talk about them. I don't want to think about why I feel the way I do, or why I do the things I want. I guess it's necessary sometimes, it helps some people to let it out, but I, I'm not some people. 
if we're made up of cells and stardust like everything else on this god awful planet, why can't we like matter just be? Why must humans be so obsessed with knowledge? And if it's not just us, why wouldn't they tell us? Maybe because they know someone will try to pick them apart too. Or maybe they can't. Maybe they're already picking us apart. And if other living matter can thrive so easily even under the stress of living, why can't we? Why can't I? Do trees not feel pain? Can they not hear cries? Does it not make the wind howl or the ra waves roar to see parts of itself? Clumps of living matter in cells just like them fight and stress and give out so easily. Do they not feel unrest? Do they not feel it? Do they not care? Am I the only one who does? Trees are not humans. They probably don't need any of that anyway. Emotions or morals or to talk about them. It doesn't matter to them. Maybe they just be like I wish to be. But people aren't trees either, I guess. I guess that's what makes me complicated. I guess that's what makes me human. Um, Dane, if that's what you've got, uh, sort of on the spur of the moment that comes spilling out of you, then would you please promise to never stop? Um, no, I'm serious. Will you promise it's... me? <laughs> <laughs> I promise. Um, it was more in the spur of the moment of like, I wrote it and then it was like, okay, this is something that I've, um, it's something that I've been thinking about for months, years, you know, something that I've been struggling with a lot. It was a really tough time to, you know, go through this process. And it was actually thanks to, you know, Thrive that I finally came to that conclusion that I guess this uh, chaos, I guess, that is everything that's going on and that is my mind, the things I think, it's what makes me like everybody else, you know, it wasn't so different. And, you know, after coming to that conclusion, it was like, okay, um, my innermost thoughts are here on paper. Do I really want to show this to people? And it was like, okay, um, I have to think about other people when I do this because I'm not the only one who thinks I'm alone. I'm not the only one who thinks, okay, yeah, yeah everybody has experiences, but mine is so different. I can't possibly be the same as everyone else. And so, yeah that that made me you know present um these things well just personally from a an observer here yes when we do sometimes need to kind of give something because it you can't imagine how many people you help by doing that how many people that that might feel similarly to you need to hear someone else feeling it that is why it's such a gift to be an artist and to, to use that. But I want you to also know that it's not being like other people that is what's making me uh, emotional. It's you're, you are so you, you are so um, special, especially you in that piece of art, Dane, that will break open other people's feelings and make them say, Hey, I'm not alone. I feel this way too. And make you feel, Hey Dane there, I'm not alone. You know, that you can feel that other people feel that way, but it's because of how special and how, um, individual you are that, that makes it special. So, um, I'm glad that you took the leap to share all of that because I'm incredibly moved by it. And I think everybody is, um, thank you. And I, yeah, I just, I just really, uh, hope that there is more and more and more and, um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, well, I think we're at the end here and, um, I'm going to go after this and go talk to these kids in the zoom room. 
but uh, I'm incredibly filled up and heavy and emotional and um, Sophie Green Hi. Perez, how are you? There's one more. That's me. Well, you know what? Uh, it's not on my list and I'm just so excited. So how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good. That's good. Uh, well, <laughs> what are you going to do for, what are you going to show us? What are, um, what are I have gonna... a poem that I wrote. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Let me, um, let me, let's hear it and then let's talk about it. Okay. <laughs> Hands held tightly together as the world falls around us. No matter what we will weather, and though our hands have yet to stop their tremble, we stand. Strength radiating from us, leaving us in the glow of a thousand suns. For we have come together when all is lost. Hearts beating together to the same rhythm, the sound echoing out. We are the ones, the artists, the doers, the poets, the writers, the actors, the singers, the ones who came together. And as the earth crumbles beneath our feet, we stand, for we believe in hope. Well, I'm really sorry that I almost missed that because it was so great. It was so great. I, th I mean, I think that's Thank my you. fault. I think my fault. I think my script, um, it's at the bottom. I guess I just cut it off. So, so no, okay. Yeah, but, but what a wonderful way to end and what a wonderful thing to hear because we all need hope, don't we? Yeah, that's true. What inspired you to write that? Um, I think I was just, I was, I like writing poems and I was just trying to think about like what I should write. And I felt really inspired by these, this group of people. They really inspired me. I love, I love them so much. Um, and so I just decided to write about them. And I actually wrote this in the, the first week of camp, like maybe two days in. That's how much I, like they were just so fun to be around. So, oh, that's amazing. That's really great. Um, I mean, I think even though we're like this and even though you were like this with the, the new friends you made and the creative people, we're still connecting. And, and if that gives you hope, that gives, tonight has given me hope. So um, I'm glad. Yeah, me too. So I'm really, I'm really grateful to you and all of your, you know, your camp friends that have been inspiring. I think all of us who are watching tonight, um, it is, there is a service to what we do. Artists, you, I'm talking about you and all of your friends and there is a service to it and it does bring people uh, to, the, to the, the surface of their feelings. And so tonight I'm really filled up and you, um, this is a perfect way to end with your wonderful writing. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. I was inspired by them. I love them. Good. And I'm sure they love you too. Yeah. All right. Now I guess we're over. So thank you guys for joining so much. It's been such a pleasure to do this with these kids. Thank you. I know you enjoyed it too. Good night. Yeah. Mm -hmm.